I am joined by Akiriate Onaruan, who is playing the title role in Natasha Pierre in The Great Comet of 1812. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank, thank you for pronouncing my name right. Oh, you're very welcome. Holy shit, also, that was great. Also no well, thank you. Also known as the Incredible Oak to thank your you. fans, of course. Thanks, man. So tell me, did you ever imagine you'd be playing an awkward accordion playing 19th century Russian on Broadway. I totally did. This was like my dream. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I was like, I want to play Pierre from, from One Piece. <laughs> right, and now right. it's That's like happening. Every it's kid. It's totally, yeah. totally happening. No, no, I never, I never thought that. It was the last thing that, that I thought I'd be doing, which is what makes it so exciting. Yeah. Because um, it's just, yeah, it's just off a little bit. And everyone's like, what? Uh, I didn't really see that happening mm -hmm. so that's exciting for me because then uh it, it's a really great new experience for everybody on board because totally. like there's like we don't know what this is going to be really and good. so your director rachel chavkin mm -hmm. she recommended you for the role but was it something that you when you had seen it imagined doing did you were no. you jealous of no like how did that not at all um actually i i, I went to opening night through her um mm -hmm. uh, because we were good friends and I was like, I went to it and I've seen, but basically most of the work she does in New York City, I, I try to go to support. And I was like, yeah, it's great. I had such a good time. And then that was, that was it. Are you comfortable yet in Pierre's skin or um, are you still crafting? I am. I am. I'm still crafting. But for me, like, you know, the, the last piece of any puzzle for what we do on stage is the audience. You know, that's why the, like, the preview process is so important and so vital. You know, because then you you finally see what you're making because you see how it's reflected from the people who see it. You know, we don't, we don't make theater just in a room for ourselves to watch. We mm -hmm. make it for people to watch. So you need that last element to really know what you're working with. So It's immersive theater, this production. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of interaction between the performers and the audience members. Is that something you are really into or is that another thing that you have to sort of get used to? Oh, no, no, I'm into it. Like uh, when I started out, I did a lot of downtown uh, theater and off-off stuff and I've done all different kinds of theater and, and and children's theater too is very, mm -hmm. very immersive in the same way where you interact. And there's just something really nice to directly connect with people and it, and it draws people in a very different way than like a traditional proscenium right. style uh, piece. So no, I'm, I'm most, yeah, I'm really, really excited to do that and, and just to look at people and have them look back at me. That's really, yeah. really cool to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. And you're succeeding Josh Groban, who made his mm -hmm. Broadway debut in the show. Have yeah. you spoken to him and your creator, Dave Malloy, about your performance as Pierre, learning little bits. Um, from them, yeah, I, sp I spoke. I spoke to both of them. I spoke to Josh, and and I, and I we've been in talks the whole process mm -hmm. with Dave on like his ideas and how he feels because he's also played. He's he's, right. he's he's playing it now, and it's just really great to see different people do it to kind of find the thread through line. Yeah, uh, between them because there's one thing that makes Pierre Pierre. So it's cool to see different people in the role to be like, oh, that's that's what it is. That's right. like the core aspect of him. So, yeah, I've been talking to them and they've been really helpful. Right, and another fan favorite from the music world, you have Ingrid Michelson, who's yeah. now, are you excited to be playing up on stage with her as well? Uh, yeah, heck yeah, very much so. I was a fan of her as, as, a, as a musician. I mm -hmm. told her that I loved, uh, loved her work. And uh, so it's, it's, really, it's really cool and exciting. And also just exciting to see um, just our community embrace yeah. different people and, and watch them thrive you know artists who don't aren't necessarily who don't necessarily work in our medium but who embrace it and do the work you know mm -hmm. the, Josh did the work and Ingrid's doing the work and they're like we're gonna be here but we're gonna honor what you do on stage and that's what's most exciting to see how much she's she's honored that and it's like no I'll, I'll I'm gonna be a theater actor and I'm gonna do right. what you guys do absolutely you were one of the last original cast members of Hamilton to mm -hmm. leave the production. Was it hard for you to leave it behind? Uh, no, because it was time. You know, mm -hmm. there's, uh, I, like, I like creating and I like new, new, new projects and, and, um, and, and bringing something fresh and new. So it, it felt, felt like it was time. And it's rare where you do a show where everyone loves it so damn much. Right. You know, totally. I was like, yeah. everyone's like, it's so great. And everyone was so moved. And that's what we want. And it's also great. Uh, since I'm next door, I stop by every now and again. And just seeing all the new people coming in, how they excited they are. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, for them to take up space, someone has to, like, vacate the space. So right. it's, it's, it's really good. It's the natural journey of moving on yeah. in these and letting the productions live. And in your off time, you're, you're a big advocate for voting rights and mm -hmm. for immigration rights mm -hmm. and the importance of hip hop in society. Do you think Hamilton had an effect on you in, in bringing that out in you, or is that something you've always been passionate about and wanted um, to use your platform as a recognized performer to further along? I think it, I think it gave me a platform. I think like, I've always been passionate about these things, but now people actually give a shit about what I say. Mm -hmm. So because Hamilton, yeah. so, like the great thing about it was now, um, as artists, when you do have a platform like that where people are paying attention, I think it's really important what you put out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put stuff about me and look at my cute dog and all that. That's great, but also when you have so many young minds who are looking up to you and hanging on your word, 
you know, it, it doesn't hurt to say some, some things that you, you, we all want to make the world better. We all right. want the world to be a stronger, more, more embracing place. So this is my opportunity. If I can just put little things out there through whatever social media feed I have about embracing change or being more empathetic, right. um, I'm going to try and do that. So that's the best thing that came out of that was this platform to yeah. do my part to try and make the world a little better. Excellent. And working with, if you can use the term, geniuses mm -hmm. like Lin-Manuel Miranda and David Malloy, yeah. what is something that these two incredible creators have taught you that you will now take forward with you as you go on and do other projects? Um, it's time. Time. Things take time. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the best thing that I learned from them is taking your time and reading it and rereading it and, and, and letting go of certain things and writing and rewriting and letting go of what you think is great and, mm -hmm. and being open to what may be greater. I've learned from them, but both of those pieces just took time. They took years to like incubate and rework and, and test and, and all of that stuff. Marinate in it, yeah. savor it, yeah. yeah. Now this is your fourth Broadway show, mm -hmm. but you've you've expanded on to film and television and all other sort of, What? where do you see your career going post the time you spend at the Great Comet? Um, every, I mean everywhere. Yeah, I want to do all the things and make all the money, sure. Yeah, do you know? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, like, but uh, living. yeah. No, but yeah, but just continuing to work on like really solid written projects that present really interesting characters, fascinating characters, honest characters, messy characters, um, but pieces that kind of inspire people to, you know, entertain other options in their mm -hmm. life, you know, uh, pieces that ask, ask people to try to think or do things different than they're used to. And for fans of yours that loved your performances, Hercules Mulligan and James Madison, when they come to see you in The Great Comet, what do you hope um, they take away from the experience? Why would you tell them like, hey, if you loved me in this, make sure you come see this piece of work as well? I think there's a grounded element about it that I really like about the show. Um, and I think the, the energy that I had in, in Hamilton, I think I'm just really interested to see what it's like in the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would be really engaging for some, some people. Um, right. People really love those two characters because of how different they were, but um, I've been told just how, how rooted and, and real they were despite like the crazy circumstance of the show. That's what everybody loved about the piece. And I think if you kind of want that same thing, that's, that's all the more reason to come um, and see a great comment. And also just to see, but like, I just want to see what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm just like pretty curious of what he's going to do. I think, I think it'll be a good time. Right. Well, make sure you go see Natasha Pierre in The Great Comet of 1812. Thank you so much. Thank you, man.